Hi, in this video about firing, I'm going to talk about the um, design elements of a gas kiln and I'm particularly focusing on our gas kilns at Metro. All of our kilns, our gas kilns are um, what we call a, um, a downdraft. They kind of look like this in design. So here's the exterior box of the kiln. This is where the front door would be. And then you're looking through the kiln to, um, to where the burner is coming into the kiln, which is where you see these black flames. And then also this circular thing over here, which is what we call the squirrel cage. All our kilns are, um, the soda, the claytarian, and the car kiln are all forced air. So there's a squirrel cage that has a, a, a little motor on it that blows air in at the, at the side of the burner. And then, um, yeah, so what happens is the, the fuel combusts right here, it combines with the air from the, the forced air, comes in burning, it hits this thing right here, which we call a target brick. And the target brick forces the flame to go up. But yet, the exit point, the opening for the chimney, which is just kind of chopped off right there, is back in here. So the flame goes up, up, up to the top of the kiln, goes towards the front, goes down, and then the, at that point it flows to the back and exits out the chimney. So that's what makes it a downdraft. Um, other parts of the kiln um, not pictured here would be the peeps, which are the, the holes in the front of the kiln that have bricks you can take out to take a little um, peek inside what's going in the kiln, and that's where you would see things like the flame coming out. That's a sign that your kiln's in reduction. Um, the This right here, um, the forced air burner, or I call it the squirrel cage, is what we call the primary source of air. And because it's coming up, it's joining with the fuel right at the burner port. This, what we call the secondary air is the air that's actually coming in the kiln via the chimney and entering at the opening. Um, and that we also control. So the, damp, the chimney has a damper, which is basically a modified kiln shelf that comes in and out. It has one inch increments marked on it. And that is somewhere back here. It's not really pictured here, but this chimney has an, uh, has an opening in the back. And like I said, a kiln shelf that comes in and out at one inch increments. So when I say leave the kiln four and a half, the damper four and a half inches open, you're gonna to wanna to count four and a half of those lines that are marked on the back of the kiln, on the, on the damper. Um, yeah, so again, to review target brick, next to this target brick right here that, that the flame hits, there's a series of about three bricks that make a little rectangular box in, inside the kiln here. That's what we call the bag wall. They are very important bricks and they need to stay there. And the bottom of the kiln, we have the exact same setup. We have one shelf in front and one shelf behind. So you can see it a little bit better up here. That's exactly the setup that we have for our kilns at Metro. So uh, you would wanna have a brick here, here, and in the center. The center one is shared between the front shelf and the back shelf. And then the back shelf will have, so it has a, uh, a brick for some furniture support here, back in that corner, and back in this corner. Um, so, a yeah, a couple of things that you can't see in this drawing that I do want to point out to you are the, um, so the burners here, this is the bag wall, the target brick would be in front. This is the opening for the, the, um, the air to escape into the chimney. And this is just kind of diagram showing you what you can't see because there's the back of the kiln and here's the chimney. Uh, one other thing that's here um, that you don't want to bump when you're loading a kiln or unloading it is right around here is the pyrometric um, 
cone uh, or thermometer that's going to give you the digital readout on on the control panel for the for the kiln. So the kilns all have a, a control panel, and basically that's how you um, turn them on. So the control panel is a gray box on the wall. It has um, a little readout here that has some um, temperatures on it. It will have the first temperature is the temperature as it's read in the kiln at that time. And then the lower temperature is the shutoff or soap temperature. So we can tell the kiln, don't go above a certain temperature. And that's when you set the soap temperature. Um, when we f typically fire a kiln, we'll leave it firing overnight to get close to um, cone 08. And we'll set that t temperature at 1700 overnight. And the next morning we'll come in and set adjust that temperature to 2300 on the um, clay, the claytarian kiln and that's telling the kiln don't fire past 2300. Actually 2300 is a little bit lower than cone 10 but the re one of the main reasons why we really pay attention a lot more to cones than we do to the pyrometric digital um, temperature readout is that that pyrometric cone on the claytarian is at least 100 degrees off and um, it reads cool. So you wanna really be paying attention to the cones, not that the, the temperature readout. And then on this thing, there's a, there's a switch for a temp on off switch. And then there's a switch here and a switch here. Those are for um, turning the burners on. So when you're ready to turn the kiln on, you turn on the main gas, which is a yellow knob. And that goes from being um, perpendicular to the gas line to being parallel. And then you flip these two switches and those will turn the pilots on and light the pilot light. And from there, you go to turn on the, the burners at the kiln to, or turn on the, the, the knobs to get the pilot, the, to go from pilot to the actual burners being on. Um, all right, so, um, I talked a lot in this uh, kiln about the design of the Claytarian. I would say the car kiln is pretty similar. The soda kiln is also similarly structured, although I find the soda kiln very hard to keep out of reduction. So I wouldn't think expect that you could ever fire an oxidation soda firing, which is too bad because that could be really beautiful. Um, but I'll talk about different atmospheres, what's the difference, be difference between a... a reduction um, firing in Claytarian and how that's different in the soda kiln, and then some basic concepts about the Raku kiln in a separate video. Thank you.